Hello everyone, in this video I will show you 5 3ds Max tools that I think are really underrated. They are really simple but compared to alternative ways, all are time saving tools and I believe should be used more. I will demonstrate all the tools in an archivist workflow but these tools are not limited to a single use and I think you will utilize them in more scenarios than I would be able to show here. Anyways, let's begin. First one is select and place. One of the things I hate the most is to find out that I have a book flying on a coffee table when I'm done with an image or worse, book is inside the coffee table. When you want to place an object on another object, there are many things you can do. For example, let's say I want this candle on this coffee table and candle has its pivot in its minimum. What I can do is basically turn on face snaps and I can turn on snaps. Then I can select it like this, put this on the face. Keep in mind that this method would only work if the object has its pivot in its minimum, but it looks quite all right now. Or what else you can do is just isolate them, go on to front view or left view. You can place them without the snaps, without activating snaps, and you can place them. But this is not the most reliable way because sometimes you would notice that there are light leaks going under this candle or whatever object you chose to. So this is not the most reliable way and also it's going to be hard to decide which line is representing the coffee table surface here. So I would say the easiest way to do this is select and place. It's the tool here right next to move, rotate and scale transform tools. Only thing you need to do is activate it. It goes to local and there are some settings you might need to change depending on the object but let's leave it for now as you can see this candle has its pivot in its center so if i use select and place in this case it will go right where the pivot is like it would do with snaps we don't want that of course you can just change the pivot to its minimum but there is a better option just check this drag and drop wherever you need it to be if you want your candle to be here, drag and drop, put it wherever you want. As you can see, it follows the direction of the z-axis. So if your object has another axis as it's up, for example, if this is y instead of z, you can simply change it here or you can reset x form always. Again, just drag and drop wherever you need your objects to be can be anything any place if you have correct normals this shouldn't be an issue and you're done no more flying books no more flying or intersecting objects it's simple as that second one is normal align i have another video talking about this so i will fast forward basically it lets you align object normals or put it simply faces to faces click on any face you need to align then click on the face that you want your first object to be aligned and that's it. Let's say this window was here and it was rotated. Only thing I need to do is first select the object, press Alt N on my keyboard or you can see the button is activated. I can select a face and I can select the other face and it's going to be rotated. And now only thing you need to do is to fix this z coordinates and we are done that's basically what you need to do it's super simple another one is grid probably you have seen it under helpers menu the grid was here and it's one of the most useful and powerful tools that you can inside max it's really powerful if you're doing a lot of modeling in different angles a very simple usage of this is grid align to fix geometry issues but it's powerful enough to replace your scene grid here i have a bad geometry and i will show you how you can use grid to fix it as you can see i have this straight wall going here then angle is distorted up here and also here and only thing i need to do is and before that i would like to show you how not to fix it you can of course do this by hand, by eye, but it will never, never be on the same line. It will never be perfectly straight. 
And because this is on a different axis, it's not like X or Y or Z, it's on an angled axis, you can just select these vertices and you can not use these tools, make planar, X, Y, Z, grid align, view align. You can't use this because we are not in the same view that we want this wall to be. What we can do is, we know that this wall here is correct. I will come here, I will select the grid, auto grid, and I will place a grid here. And I will right click now, activate grid, and now this is my grid. Not the grid that you would see in the center of your scene, but this. This is my grid. And what I will do is come here, select the faces. Let's add another edit poly on top. Select the faces like this. Now you can click grid line. And that's it. Now this is perfectly aligned. If you want to fix more faces, you can select this grid. You can select and place tool, activate it just like I shown before, drag and drop this to the other correct face. And then, because this is still activated grid, select these faces and again, one more time, press grid align. And it's perfectly in line, as you can see here. Other thing you can do is select your rotation tool, set it to local, rotate this to 90 degrees so it it will have its z up like you would have with the base grid and now as you can see this is my top view also top view here but now i will come here top extended views grid and top now this will as you can see not like this but this top will follow this angle because now now this view is using x y z based on the second grid i have created that's basically it and you can see it actually here the whole viewport is using a different grid that i have created if you want to get rid of this if you want to turn back to your original grid only thing you need to do is go to tools grids and snaps and activate home grid so you will go where you should have been. The other tool I would like to show you is actually a shortcut and it's awesome. I love this in particular because I often see people being annoyed by this by accidental activation. But it's extremely powerful and I think it's one of the best small additions in recent years. It's the shortcut X and you can basically press X on your keyboard to do whatever you want. Do you want to create a box? Press X, write down box, and you will create a box. You want to add an edit poly on top, press X, write down edit poly, and now you will have an edit poly. You want to add a Boolean compound object, press X and write down Boolean, and now you have a Boolean. And not just modifiers and object creations. You want to go and change something in your preferences, Press X and write down references and you have it. And you can also use this to activate your own scripts and tools like copy, for example. Press X, copy. And now I copied this. Let's delete. Press X, paste. That's it. It is awesome and you can basically use it for anything you want and considering all the menus you need to go through to do certain things it would save you a lot of time last one is for the slate material editor most of the time you would adjust your textures inside the material editor because it makes sense not to use a third-party software if you can do it in max to save some time but sometimes the material and the node setup gets a bit complicated with multiple nodes and adjustments and you want to have everything as a single texture. That's where render map comes into play. Let's open the material editor. I have this pillow here and you can see the material is already here. And 
I will do some adjustments to create a pattern with it and I will use composites and color corrections. Let's put this here for now. What you can do here, instead of using this node setup, render this node setup to a single texture and basically you need to right click on this final node before your material, render map, I will give the resolution that I want, in this case let's say 2000, 2000 and I will put it in my D drive, you can select anywhere you want and I will save it as a jpeg full quality as you can see it has this location now and you can press render that's it you don't need to do anything you don't need to save and now let's put it to its place as you can see this bot have no difference at all and now i can get rid of this Keep in mind that it will not work as expected with procedural nodes, but to be able to use them accurately, you can just set it to explicit map channel instead of object map channel. Then you can also bake this with other nodes and other maps to a single texture. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give a thumbs up. If you want to see more time saving tips like this, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, requests or suggestions, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching and have fun modeling.